How's it going? Welcome back, it's Jonathan. Now, in this video, I'm just going to be continuing on with uh, basically our prior forecast for 2024, what they've looked like, and uh, I'm gonna give you basically an early update on the projected year. And the one I'm gonna be looking at today is gonna to be gold and silver. Uh, more predominantly gold. Silver generally tends to follow gold somewhere or another. However, it hasn't really broken out uh, to the degree that gold has. So I'm gonna give you the, the forecast for gold, uh, my thought process on gold, which is outlined in this forecast. And you can use that for, for your own goodwill. And um, you'll know that why there was a possibility that the forecast was gonna go wrong this year and what you can do about it if you ever come across this yourself, okay? So again, this is gonna be just me reading the screen and it's gonna give you an update on my prior outlook. This was last year going into 2024 and then my reasoning behind why I was thinking some certain things. And this is what I give you, okay? So gold and silver, forecasting precious metals isn't easy. They have inherent cycles, but are greatly influenced by fundamental factors which can cause them to deviate from their forecast. This can make them look like, this can make it look like the forecast is incorrect or off. But I've produced several forecasts of these markets which have been spot on, and this year I'll attempt to do the same. Gold's inherent cycle is indicating a bearish bias next year. While this is the cycle outcome, I'm going to put a few reasons as to why I don't think this is going to be the case. After a potential low in gold around March to May 2024, not shown on the natural gold cycle above, gold may move, mauve, I gotta fix that spelling, gold may move to break the tops, triple tops, that it hasn't been able to break yet since 2020. So this is the inherent cycle that we use in gold uh, basically, yeah, I'm going to go over some old ones for you. This is gold inherent cycle and what I was suggesting that is gold has another cycle which I'm going to cover in a very, very, very special and very limited um, gold forecasting course which we'll have coming out in the future. That gold also has another cycle which was found by a lovely gentleman that I have uh, done many videos on in the past and it is based on gold's position around the zodiac, okay? Now what he found was that gold was likely, and he wrote this book uh, back around 2016, gold was likely to break out and be in a massive bull run after its inherent cyclical low around March to May 2024. Now we know now that gold had continued to push up into last year and just continued to push up into the year, but I had naturally held a, uh, an opinion that after the March low, the cycles would invert and then the gold would just skyrocket higher. That was the, the theory that I had just run with, okay? That was my ongoing bias. I wasn't, I wasn't holding a predominantly bearish bias for the year, given the fact that gold was gonna move higher and I, outlaid, I outlined it here. Now, I haven't actually gone through these dates here. Uh, if you want to, you can. I haven't, uh, I haven't actually done an update, but these are the ones that I provided at the time. Here are the dates, the black boxes on the chart above. Highs and lows may occur within four days of these dates. Uh, these, are the, these are the highs and lows on the back bars here. You uh, might want to just pause the chart and just see, uh, pause the video and just see if any of these dates had actually occurred. I hadn't um, actually gone into it yet. So in summary, or maybe we can in this video, let's take, let's take a look and see if there's actually anything in this video that we can gain value from. So the dates that we were looking at for a potential change in trend in the gold market, just based on this uh, one opinion, was, and this is, uh, XAU USD chart, okay? I really don't think that gold moved that high yesterday. Okay, according to this data it did, but I really don't think it did. This is more of what I had in mind. Okay. Sorry about that, I just didn't think that was right. So December 1st, 2024, we're looking for a potential high and low within four days. Uh, December 1st, 2024, uh, that's basically this here, okay? So that was the first one that we highlighted with a potential high or low uh, within four days. January 29th, 2024, January 29th, uh, I guess you could say it was around, around here. We, didn't really see anything. We did have a Friday period. Not really significant, okay? I didn't really like that at all. This is a more of a time by solar degrees date, um, which I found, but yeah, nothing for that one. February 14th, 
Uh, we got February 14th right here, which is a low. So we basically got this one perfect. This one not so much, this one good. Uh, February 27th. Uh, 28th is a low before the major kickoff started. March 9th. Uh, March 8th is this one here. March 9th uh, would have been a top, but it was a weekend. Market moved down. April 10th. April 10th, April 10th, April 10th. Uh, this low, I would have really liked it to be in April 12th. That would have been nice. However, it does stay within four days. So I think it could have been this top right here, okay? Would have been nice if we actually nailed it though. April 28th, uh, April 26th to 28th, uh, to 29th is over a weekend. So this top here, my computer's frozen. June 11th, let's head out to June now. Uh, this basically June 7th, then we had a weekend out to the 11th, this major move here. Again, we're looking for these major or very important swings on the market, okay? These, these, these are astro dates, okay? This is based on planetary alignment, okay? Astro dates. July 15th and then July 21. June, July 15th. Uh, 15th was this one here. The top came in on the 17th. And then 21. Uh, 22nd was the low. Nothing too major. The, the low came on the 25th. So that was about four days later. Um, however, You'd have to find out how you interpret that data yourself. August 14th and then August 16th, we've got a cluster here in price, so 14th and 16th. Basically this range in here was uh, planetary energy. September 2nd and September 29th, which is the future. So September 2nd, the low came in on the 4th. Um, the top also came in around the 28th, 20, uh, 29th, sorry. So it's a little hard to see if anything happened here. The future ones which you can track are the 29th, 28th, and the 3rd of November, okay? So you can pop them on the chart. So let's continue. That was, that was actually um, very interesting to point that out. I hadn't actually been following them myself. So in summary, I currently hold a bearish outlook on gold, but not for all of 2024. And I wouldn't be surprised if gold inverts its cycle higher. We won't know yet until it does, but here's the past forecast on gold with no inversions turned on in the mass pressure chart. Okay, so what I've done here is basically I've said, look, this is the forecast for 2024 based on gold's natural cycle, okay? Not including any planetary cycles. This is just gold's natural cycle. It is pointing down and we should keep that in mind. And then I said, however, but going by its planetary cycle, gold might, you know, find a low around that March to May time period and then just burst higher, okay? We know now that, um, Obviously, around February, the market made its bottom. By March, it had already broken out. So I had I had looked for a low around that March to May area, but it already it already had um, bottomed out in February, and then March was just the bull run had already started. So I was I was if, I was basically a month off in that time period, which is okay. Uh, there's reasonings as to why I chose March. Uh, if you've watched my other videos, you'll know exactly that reasoning and what I'm talking about. All right, so this is 2018. This is the natural gold cycle. This is one that we predominantly use and I'll continue using out into the future until planetary cycles overtake it. And we can see that this is just the forecast for gold based on its natural cycle, okay? I haven't given anyone the keys to this cycle. However, I am going to teach it in the GAN uh, mastery program. It's gonna become part of a special gold uh, forecasting one that I have. This is 2019. Again, uh, not exactly synced up. However, we've got rising prices, falling prices, rising prices, falling prices. It's a little off sync, okay? So market was rising, then falling until around here. The forecast was basically a month and a half late. It rose up, forecast was, in this case, maybe two months late, and then it uh, fell and the forecast was basically two months late, okay? So good directional bias, however, not exactly lined up with the time periods of the market there. Uh, so 2019, 2020, Again, very good synchronicity in the market with the forecast. Then we had 2021, down, up, down, up. Basically the whole uh, market was sideways. That was the theory. Again, look at your opens and closes and then look at the, um, the pattern through it. Gives you the bias for the year. So the bias for the year for 2021 was basically sideways, which I had. And then 2022. 2022, this is one that uh, caught me off guard. I had markets going up into a peak and then falling into a low around May, and then rising. 
and then falling and then rising. This whole section here was inverted lower. You can see if you go right here, go up, you can see that it's basically inverted in the opposite direction. This is what can happen in your cycle sometimes. They can just invert the opposite way. And there's no telling when that inversion is going to occur, but just know that if it keeps falling, what your time frames that you're looking for that inversion to complete occur. Uh, 2023 market was going to rise and fall which it did rise and fall market was going to then trade up until around what's this maybe june ish market trade up until may fall into this low here then trade higher what we had here was actually just a lower high so it did it did follow the similar pattern and then fall lower into september rise up here and then we were just looking for that end of year uh, basically that end of year blast off which you'll be able to see on your chart now uh, so falling into this period and then the end of year just for that rally. The rally didn't really blast off until the next year. However, that was the trajectory was up higher. So that is the reason why I, I use both. I use both the, the cyclical mass pressure charts, which is what we use when we're doing GAN. And then we'd also use the planetary stuff. Okay, that's why I do both because it gives us the outcome. The, what we want to see if we're trying to look for a perfect forecast, which can happen is we want the planetary forecast to be aligning with our cyclical forecast. And that's when you get a beautiful yearly forecast. All oh, those ones are really good. Just makes you look like a bloody genius, a wizard. But sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm not really a wizard. As you can see, uh, we should pay special attention to goals natural cycles. It's proven a good guide for directional bias. However, for, uh, after a long-term cycle shift occurs, it may force the market higher. And the low for gold I am looking for is around March to May. All we can do is wait and see if it prolongs downwards or inverts. After the low occurs though, we should be in for rising prices for years to come, following our yearly forecast for these patterns. Again, I did use timing solutions and I looked at the cycles and timing solutions, and that's also why I had another um, bias for potentially a low around March. However, the cyclical pattern didn't play out. The market just broke out pretty much earlier than that. Uh, the annual and decade cycle for silver resembles a close similarity to gold's mass pressure chart, basically a downward trending market. Gold and silver generally move in sync, so this is one to be interesting observation. And what we can see here is we can see markets rising, falling, markets rising, falling. However, by the end of the year, there is just more of a downward push on silver. And we can see that play out in uh, silver. That's all I have for this video. I hope it um, has provided you more food for thought on what's possible in the world. And yeah, I'm just giving you different angles on things that I'm doing okay. And these, these all get published every year. The ones I have in this platform are from 2022. However, in a different platform, we got them going back um, to around 2016. Also, if you want to just get like my daily thoughts on things, just follow me on Facebook. It's probably the easiest way or Instagram. And uh, I, I just post my thoughts and opinions there all the time. Some opinions you might agree with, some opinions you might be fully in, in align with. Uh, yeah, it's up to you. Just an offer.